How's it going, guys? And welcome back to another JHR review. Today, we're going to be looking at something a little bit different. I started a figure collection not that long ago, and it has grown quite exponentially, so I might start focusing on some of those figures that I have. This is one that I recently picked up. It's from SHF Figure Arts, and it is Kaiju number no. 8 from the anime Kaiju number no. 8. And it is a fully posable kind of action figure. And I was really attracted to this one because it has quite the amount of accessories and posability, which I thought was really cool. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at the box. I have previously opened this, so you might notice there's a little bit of bulge from where I've opened things up. And the standard hands aren't attached, it's his open hand. But this is the front of the box. This is what the side of the box looks like. And here we are on the back of the box. We can focus in on there. You can see the different expressions that you get, the posability of the figure. And this is by Bandai Namco. I think it's a pretty decent uh, action figure, honestly. It could be worse. And here's the other side. Let's go ahead and open this up and see the accessories and uh, see how you guys like it. This is what the inside looks like. You can pull the tabs to the side and it just pretty much slides right out. As you can see right here, the figure is held in by a plastic sheet that kind of just snaps in on the top so all your accessories don't fall out. Popping this out, you can see all of the accessories revealed. I'm not going to pick this up as it will kind of make everything fall out, but we're going to check them out individually anyways. So let's just go ahead and start with the main course, I guess you could say, which is the figure itself. So this is Kaiju number eight. As you see, you can pose him on his feet. I believe he'll stand up by himself. Let me get him in the right position. As you can see, the figure stands up by itself pretty easily. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit so you can get more of the finer details though. Focus in on the face. As you can see, they got the detail in the eyes, which is pretty nice. I feel like the mask could have more indentions or maybe some weathering to it. There's a really nice um, model kit that does that really well. Here's what the abdomen looks like. You can see that there's a piece right here that can shift, kind of like a thinner rubber piece for different uh, motions. I can't really move it right now, but you kind of get the, the drift. It's good for when you need to bend him and do kind of like an ab crunch. The shoulders have this thing where you can drop down. It's like a double socket kind of. You can move it up and down. Then it really helps with how you want to extend the arms. You can move the hands up, obviously, and the rotation's pretty good. There's a ball joint right there. You can rotate right here as well. And it would be the same on the other side. Looking at the face plate, if we zoom in real quick, this is actually attached to a ball joint. So removing the face mask shows the ball joint hole along with the little peg. And you can just peg the face right back on. And that's good. I would say the only th drawback about this figure, in my opinion, is the fact that you can't really rotate the head back to look up. As you can see, these are hard molded in here. And when you move back, even a little bit, you immediately get stopped. Luckily, there is a bit of flexibility in the abdomen where you can kind of do like a, I guess you could say faux back pose if you wanted to do like that with the legs and kind of pose them to make them look like he's like, I don't know, looking back up a little bit but it's not really a looking up figure. But the ab crunch forward, on the other hand, he can pretty much just sit down. It's pretty good. Toes have articulation as well. And then there's a ball socket and you can rotate as well. 
knees bend back pretty far, to be honest. Very well. And kind of prop him back up there. As you can see, this piece right here is kind of for, um, it's kind of just loosely fit around everything for uh, posability. You know, I think he looks pretty good, to be honest. I'm not sure if he was worth $60, which is quite expensive, but this is one of the only figures you can currently get um, outside of ordering straight from Japan. The uh, thigh joints or the hip joints move pretty well. There's also a rotation on the leg right here, so you can rotate the leg this way, which is actually really impressive. Um, let's go ahead and move this back. But yeah, I'm not sure about the price, but I like the quality and I like the posability. Let's check out some of the other faces. From the first slot, I'm not going to put it on the figure. We can focus in, though. Here is one of the expressions that you can use for if you're going to be punching something. I think that looks really good, nice and detailed. You can see the eyes the small pupil, and even the teeth have pretty decent detail, to be honest. Here is a kind of, here's kind of a looking to the side kind of look. And my favorite right here, I can show you, is the doofy surprised expression which is very on brand for um Hebe no Kafka and then of course if you want to swap out the fists or the hands to the fists you can right here one cool thing is you can actually put this on the shoulder. This is the cannon arm, kind of, when he attacks. And it also has his special foot that you can attach to his leg. And this gives you those rods that you put in. I can zoom in, or focus in, I mean. Gives you these rods that you kind of stick in here, and then pose it on the surface that you want, which is pretty cool, to be honest. But let's go ahead and see a pose that this guy can do before we wrap up. You can, if you wanted him to do like a pretty high up kick, I'm not sure if he could necessarily do that. But I feel like if he rotated it the right way, you know what? He could have like a relaxing pose, which is kind of on brand if I'm not, I'm not going to lie. He could do something like this. Not sure about the rotation. I'm not very good at posing figures as I just started collecting them. I'm not a figure guru. Um, actually, doing it like this is better. He can't interlock his fingers, of course, but you can kind of hide it behind his head. And as you can see now, he's in a relaxed pose, kind of just chilling. And reverting him to his regular pose is relatively easy. The joints are just stiff enough to where it doesn't feel like you're going to be like breaking anything or whatnot. I always felt like the Naruto figure that I got from uh, SH Figure Arts, um, which I think is actually is SH Figure Arts, but SHF, which F is for the Figure Arts part. Um, I felt like he fell apart a little bit too easy. But this one seems to be doing pretty good. Now if you wanted to do like a obvious action pose, I think you'd bring this foot back and then maybe bring that forward maybe a little bit of thing to the knee and then you rotate to the side and maybe have him look over a little bit i don't have his fists on but you could imagine if he did um kind of ready to like punch at someone or something like that i think it looks pretty good though I think that out of the figures that I've gotten that are actually posable, because most of mine are actually statues, I think that this one actually is pretty good quality. I'd give it a solid 7.5 out of 10, only because I think that the mask looks a little bit plasticky compared to the model kit that I've seen, and the model kit is even more posable than this one. 
But yeah, this is the Kaiju number no. 8, Hibi no Kafka in the Kaiju form. Um, figure from SH Figure Arts. Let me know what you guys think, and I will see you guys in the next video.